Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mech Spotlight. Today we got a special one for you. We're taking a look at our very first ever Super Heavy. Uh, this is from the latest update to yet another god dang mech. Uh, the last update he added, uh, with this last update, he added, uh, what was it, six, like seven heavy mech, uh, Super Heavy mechs, uh, all over 100 tons, well over 100 tons. Um, so... We're going to be taking a look at a lot of them in the in the coming episodes. Uh, some of them still have a few issues. Um, for example, I think it was the Hydra had a uh, the center torso cannon that's mounted on top uh, was firing off to the left of the reticle for some reason. So there's a uh, weapon convergence or, or target aiming issue with that mech. Um, but fortunately, this Omega has no issues that I've discovered thus far. So, uh, one note, these mechs are so big that they will not fit through the door on the Leopard. So the way to fix that, uh, and I didn't, I wasn't even aware of this before, but in the mod options for YAML, there is a setting. Um, oh, I don't remember where it was. It might've been under miscellaneous category uh, for the YAML mod options. Um, but anyway, somewhere in there, there's an option to rescale mechs. Uh, if you turn that on, it will rescale all the mechs uh, and make it, make it so that this mech and other you know, extremely large mechs will actually fit through the doors on the Leopard, uh, and you won't have any issues with that. So I just wanted to mention that for you guys right off the bat. Um, but yeah, basically, this is a massive behemoth of a mech. You can see that it was based on the model of the King Crab, um, but it was scaled up, given a ton of really awesome armor plating. I like the armor plating. I think that's exactly what a super heavy mech would have, right? Uh, so it makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, the top mounted cannons are really cool as well. I like those. The way they look, the way they fit with the mech is just perfect. And then you got the huge arm cannons that remind me of the cannons from the uh, Stone Rhino um, a little bit, right? So anyways, really cool model. I like it a lot. Um, in fact, all of the models, all of the super heavy models from this update uh, to Yagdom was were really cool. I like them all. They're each based uh, on a different assault mech chassis, uh, but then upscaled and modified to make it a super heavy. Um, really cool stuff. For the paint scheme on this, I just went with Franken. You can see there's not a lot of options for paint schemes yet. Uh, you do have this Raptor one that's not a standard paint scheme. That's a pretty cool one too. Um, let's reset the colors. You could go with something like that. Uh, but anyways, I went with Franken and just kind of went with my standard black, red, and white color scheme. Um, I think it looks cool, so that's kind of my my standard go-to when I don't have a lot of time to play around and, and figure out a different paint scheme. Um, so, mostly just wanted to show you the model. I like it a lot. Really cool stuff, and uh, you'll get to see the rest of them uh, soon, hopefully, if I get time to make some more videos about them. So, let's talk about this one in particular. This is the Omega X10. Uh, that is a hero mech. It is the Homeland hero variant. Um, it doesn't show it anywhere here, but yeah, the uh, the nickname for this hero variant is Homeland. Uh, so let's go through the quirks real quick. You get some sensor bonuses. You get distracting, which is incoming damage to armor and structure minus five percent. Also nice to have. Hard to pilot. Piloting skill modifier minus one. That's not great, but we do. I believe we do make up for that, and I'll show you how uh, when we get to the internals. Uh, obsolete mech. Uh, this just makes uh, it's all economy stuff, really. Um, just makes it more expensive and it also hurts your torso twist a little bit uh, just slightly prototype mech uh, this one just gives you some bo or uh, it, it's really more economy stuff um, I was gonna say I thought it had a bonus or two to something yeah weapon damage to structure um, so you're gonna take more damage to structure as well which is not great uh, Draconos Combine. This is a Draconos Combine mech. Um, super Heavy. So, that's another cool thing about the Super Heavies. Uh, I believe, I didn't look at all of them, but I believe each one is from a different faction. Uh, so that's kind of cool also. Um, so, yeah, this design originates or is predominantly used by Draconos Combine. Since they don't like outsiders using their designs, upkeep and repair costs are noticeably higher. Uh, so again, economy... <clears throat> it's going to be more expensive. The super heavies, it makes sense. They're just going to be really expensive to maintain and uh, keep on board. 
On the bright side, mechs from this faction have improved mobility as well as a better proficiency with SRMs, MRMs, and PPCs. All weapons also benefit from a reduced min minimum range and heat per shot. However, with the exception of PPCs, all weapons suffer from a reduced optimal range. <clears throat> so, excuse me. <coughs> uh, so, we're not using any PPCs. Not a big deal there. I mean, you're just losing a little bit of range on it, basically. Uh, but you do get some other bonuses there that are pretty nice. Um, so your turn speed is faster, deceleration is faster, jump jet burn time. We don't have any jump jets on this, though. Uh, then you got some economy stuff there again. Non-PPC weapon optimal range is reduced, as well as max range, like I was saying. Uh, but weapon heat generation is also reduced. Weapon zero damage range, not important for this build. Uh, weapon minimum range, again, not important for this build. PPC projectile speed and cooldown, not important for this build. And MRM and SRM spread radius and projectile speed, not important for this build. So, not a whole lot in there that really helps us with this particular build. Um, but there are a couple bonuses in there to grab as well out of that. Uh, now we get to the Omega Endurance uh, quirk. This just gives you bonuses to your armor and structure as most heroes have. Uh, these are pretty healthy bonuses for a hero endurance quirk. Now we finally get to the Homeland, the X-10 quirk. Um, this one gives you, let's see, arm twist uh, angle modifier. So you get a little bit more arm twist angle on there. Uh, arm mounts heat generation, arm mounts range, uh, both increased, that's, or, well, the heat generation is reduced, uh, range is increased, uh, so that's pretty nice, it's weapons on the arm only, though, and we're using a lot of, uh, hard points on the torso as well, um, so there is that, uh, torso goss mounts projectile speed, torso goss mounts cooldown, torso goss mounts damage, really healthy bonus to damage there, and torso goss mounts ammo that's pretty nice as well um so we put our hags on the torso we got one on right torso one on left torso and one on the ct um when i check the stats it looks like these do count as goss weapons so you are getting any bonuses that say they are for goss uh correct me if i'm wrong on that if you know better than i do but i looked at the weapons uh on a different mech and then on this one i also looked at them with um uh, some equipment that had goss bonuses and it looks like it was affected by that as well So I do believe they are affected by anything that says it affects goss rifles um, So those are nice bonuses to have for our hags because hags are of course goss rifles They're hyper assault goss rifles and we have three hag 20s um, so on top of that, you get PPC, projectile speed, and heat, laser beam duration, incoming cannon damage to armor is reduced, and incoming cannon damage to structure is reduced. Uh, yeah, overall, solid mech, very durable, uh, has a lot of survivability to it, and very deadly, uh, particularly at close range, uh, because our weapon loadout here on each arm we're carrying an LB-20X, uh, and then as i said on the torso we have three hag 20s on the torso so we're getting a lot of range damage out of that and then anything that does get closer gets finished off with some lb 20s uh which are also extremely strong weapons um so and then i threw two laser ams on there as well for some defensive ability against missiles uh you can see the internals here uh let's go let's we'll start at the head um so, internals for the head, we have sniper sensors, pretty standard, especially when you have long-range weapons like the HAGs. Uh, modular FCS. With this, I got uh, a few battle computers. We got ballistic, of course. Piloting uh, gives us that piloting skill modifier plus one, so that basically uh, zeroes out that negative that we had from the uh, mech quirks. Uh, and then you get some other bonuses there as well. I also brought the uh, range battle computer because the Draconis combine quirk is reducing our range um so i wanted to keep our range as high as possible on the lb20s so i brought that along and then we got battle computer predictive uh, this gives us a lot of nice bonuses to ballistic as well uh and yeah so i think that was all the battle computers now retrofit support i went with shielding uh you could go with something like evasion i think shielding is probably gonna do more for you cockpit armored um i left that as is that was in the mech to begin with you could also go slick suite that's pretty standard for me is is to go slick suite there so you could do that 
Uh, the mech also comes with Blue Shield PFD already on it, so I left that there. I've never used that in a build before. I'm not super convinced it's worth it. It is three tons, uh, and it takes up a crit slot on each component. Um, so, is it worth it? I don't know. Jury's still out on that. This mech has a lot of durability anyways. This just adds to it. But it was on the hero build to begin with, so I decided to keep it. Uh, I did put Pharaoh Carbide Armor on, as well as Clan Endo Structure, which I think was already there. No, I put that on as well. Uh, we had Clan Double Heatsink Kit. That actually should have been Royal, but it didn't really matter because our cooling, as you can see, we are practically heat neutral there. Um, so, Engine, or Gyro, sorry. I went with the Compact Gyro as well because we do have a Hag 20 in the CT. We needed some extra space there. Um... And then we have the Clan Double XL engine to free up some weight. Even with 150 tons, when you're carrying this much firepower, you need all the free tonnage you can get. So we went with the Double XL there. Uh, as thick as the armor is on this thing, it's very unlikely you're going to lose a side torso, anyways. So unless you just are terrible at the game, I guess. Uh, engine core is 400. It it came with like a 350 to start with, or some 375, something like that. I bumped up to 400. I wanted it to be a little bit faster, you know. 48 kph is about about my minimum i absolutely hate going slower than that in any mech even a super heavy uh and then we filled up the uh engine heat sinks with doubles uh so let's move on to the rest of our uh internals here we got case on both side torsos because we are stacking a lot of ammo in there uh the lbx 20 ammo is the ammo that we're actually worried about uh with exploding i think yeah equipment explosion damage the hag rounds don't explode so you don't have to worry so much about those um you could actually save yourself a little bit of space by taking one of the case off moving the lbx 20s over here and this uh hag ammo over here uh then you wouldn't need the case there but also if you lose one of those side torsos then you lose all the ammo for that well you're gonna lose you're gonna die anyways because the double xl so yeah you could probably do that free up another half ton and put it into armor on the legs or something uh we do have an extra double heat sink here and that's pretty much it for the side torsos the the bloodhound probe angel ecm you could switch those out for a clan ecm and a clan probe it would save you some tonnage and some space um but these were already on the mech i decided to go ahead and i wanted to keep this build as similar to the stock hero build as i could uh so we're using all the same weapons that it would have on its stock i did add the ams um, but we're keeping a lot of the internals as well, like the Blue Shield, the Angel ECM, the Bloodhound. Uh, I did add the modular FCS with the battle computers and that sort of stuff. Uh, but anyways, you get the idea. We do have a double heat sink in each leg as well. I added speedy leg actuators onto the legs because I did want a little bit more speed out of there. And then upper alley ceramic because we had a, like an extra ton or so at the end. I guess it would be three tons because they're one and a half each. Um, so I threw that on there for a little extra armor on the arms. Uh, which are carrying a patchwork two on each uh, just to use up the last four slots that I had, had available uh, and free up a little bit more tonnage. So that is the build, guys. The LB20s do massive work on anything that gets close, uh, you know, within, within 600 meters really is when I start using those uh, primarily. Uh, and they fire a little bit faster than the hags, um, so you'll get some good DPS out of those. The hags are really nice weapon systems. If you haven't used them, it's just a burst fire Gauss rifle, essentially. Fires deadly burst of projectiles with each round striking with the same power as an AC-5. Will explode if destroyed. Um, does it say how many? Four round burst for the hag 20. Um, that's right, it's double basically whatever the first digit is of the, the 20, 30, or 40. Uh, but anyway, so you're getting a four round burst with the Hag 20s, doing massive damage, basically an AC5 each time. You have three of those on here, so you're getting really nice alpha damage out of this guy. If anything gets close enough to where you hit him with the LB20s and the Gauss rifles all at the same time, they're going to drop real quick, and you'll see that a few times in the gameplay. Um, but a lot of the time you're going to be shooting from, a rain, from range uh, with the Hag 20s, uh sniping targets and then you'll have some light mechs and medium mechs that get close to you and you'll use the lb20s on them uh for close range defense nothing like a shotgun for cqb right uh that's pretty much it that's the build guys it's our very first ever super heavy mech 
uh, from Yagdom. Uh, the latest update adds a bunch of them, so check them out. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll let you watch the gameplay footage. Have a good one. Online. Sensors online. Weapons online. Monsters is not. 